on God, Amen. Today is the sixth and final Sunday of Great Lent, and we refer to this Sunday as the Baptism Sunday. Next week, we'll, God willing, celebrate Palm Sunday. And we see this theme of salvation and baptism uh, linked to this gospel. And it's actually linked to last week's gospel as well uh, about the paralyzed man, where we see both men were waiting for healing, and Christ came to both and healed them both. Um, I have kind of two perspectives today, and hopefully, hopefully we're going to be okay. Um, in the life of every man and woman, there is a defining moment. And it's called a defining moment because oftentimes it impacts, um, it impacts us in a way that it really just changes our lives permanently. And a lot of ways, this defining moment impacts us in such a way that it might define who we are for the rest of our lives. For some people, the defining moment is when they hit a certain age. Maybe when they hit 40 years old, right? 50, whatever it is. Or for some, it was when they had open heart surgery. Or for others, the defining moment is the loss of a loved one. It could be a recognition of an award, um, uh, some kind of uh, some kind of recognition for completing a certain project. This could be a defining moment. For others, a defining moment could be defined from a great tragedy in life. In the case of the blind man in today's gospel, his first encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, the moment that he regained his sight was amazing. But it gets even better. His true defining moment came later. It wasn't the recovery of his physical sight. This was not the defining moment. And I think this is an important idea for us to grasp. Imagine a young man who had been deprived of the sense of sight from the time he was born. He had never seen the face of his mother or father. He had never seen a sunset. He had never seen the majesty of the temple in Jerusalem. He had never seen the stars or the moon light up the night sky. After all this, we would think that his defining moment would be the moment that Christ healed his blindness. And we would be wrong. His defining moment was the moment that his spiritual eyes were opened. Let's take a step back for a moment. The blind man had just been cast out. This would happen in verse 34 of today's gospel. This gospel comes from the gospel of John chapter 9, 1 through 41. But in verse 34, he was cast out of the synagogue because he told the Pharisees what happened to him because of Christ. And when Christ heard that he was cast out of the synagogue, he went and found him in verse 35. And he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? The defining moment had finally arrived. It wasn't the recovery of his physical sight that was the defining moment. His defining moment was the moment that his spiritual eyes were opened. When he asked God, do you believe? When he was asked, do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered in verse 36, And who is he, sir, that I might believe in him? And our Lord said in verse 37, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. This was the defining moment. This was it. No matter what you have allowed in your life to define you, the fact that you are in the church opens amazing possibilities. You can be like this man who had a great miracle done in his own life, and yet when you stare in the face of Christ, or you hear his name, you still don't know exactly who he is. You may fail to understand his true identity. You may say with your lips, he is the son of God, but it's not the lips that define us, but the heart. The defining moment in a man or woman's life is the moment that grabs his whole heart 
and begins to form and to mold him for the rest of his life. When a young man or a woman really understands the reality of who Christ is, he leaves everything and jumps over every hurdle in, a, in the way of loving and serving his master, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so the Lord lights everything that's dark. He takes the dark places in our hearts and he fills, him, fills it with his light. Sometimes he sees us wandering about as if we were blind. He alone can provide purpose and light for our path. And so let's, let's switch gears for a moment. Another point for today is how do we look at the difficulties or the tragedies of our life? The disciples saw the tragedy of a man born blind, and they wanted to know only one thing. Who's to blame? Was it the man who was born blind, or, or was it his parents? Right? Was it him, or was it his parents? Who's to blame? Another way to think of it is, A better way to deal with tragedy and the difficulties of life is to blame. So our Lord gives the answer. He tells the disciples, basically, he's saying, don't try to blame anyone for a bad thing that's happened. Instead, recognize this as a chance to, to witness for God's work, his work and his glory. And this is, this is a very, very difficult thing. It's a hard question for us to process. Would we recognize and give glory to God if life was smooth sailing? I'm going to say that again. Would we recognize and give glory to God if life was always smooth sailing? I don't think so. When things become difficult, when life becomes too much to bear, when we're forced into a certain amount of desperation, we find that God often provides a way, and he is preparing our hearts to receive it. We spend so much time blaming. We blame others when things go wrong. And the Lord wants us to rise above all of that. He wants us to see that whatever difficulties come up, whatever challenges come up in our lives, whatever circumstances come our way, he has allowed it. And he can resolve it when we're ready. In our day and age, there is a considerable amount of time blaming. Blaming others for all the bad things that happen in the world. Right? Democrats, they blame Republicans. And Republicans blame the Democrats. And when a marriage is rocky or difficult... We, we spend time playing the blame game. We point fingers. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's the mother-in-law's fault. Not my mother-in-law. But like, right? This it's, it's, every, it's everyone's fault. We blame, we blame and we point fingers at everybody. Whatever the case is, we have a certain tendency to find a reason for the suffering and the pain that we see around us. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ were very similar in this way when they saw the man who was born blind. In the Jewish world when, in which they were raised, this type of birth would have been a curse. And the curse was due to the sins of either this man or his parents. But again, our Lord lifts this understanding and brings to light the truth of the matter. The man was not blind because of something that either he or his parents did. Some of us have a tendency to believe that every bad thing that happens to us in life is a direct curse or a punishment because of our sins. And it may be possible that there's a consequence of sin. Don't get me wrong. But this is not the case in this gospel passage for today. And in fact, it's, it's the opposite. He allowed it to reveal his mercy. Our Lord says, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be made, man, made manifest in him. We have many difficulties in life. And it's not always the case that the difficulties are meant to punish us or to oppress us. When is the last time we looked at a difficulty or challenge in our life with this 
like hopeful anticipation of what God is about to do in our lives. When is the last time that we're going that we're excited about what we're what God is doing in the midst of our difficulties? As a church, we come across various problems and difficulties from day to day, from week to week. We have the privilege of praying together as often as we like because God has opened the doors to make that possible. God doesn't always work in a way that we can recognize, especially when we rely on outside assistance. God waits and works when things look impossibly difficult. And he specializes in knowing that his might and showing his might when nothing but his might will solve the problem. And so it's important for us as Christians, as people of faith and hope in the living God, to stop rationalizing pain. We have to stop rationalizing suffering and difficulties in life. As people who are lifted and enlightened by God, we are invited to see every difficulty as a chance for God to work. Sometimes he works independently of us. Sometimes he works directly through us. But in all of this, we realize that while the issues and difficulties we face are real, they're not impossible. They're not impossible. Our Lord reminds us that with God, all things are possible. So, in all things, we require the faith to know that God will help us when all other solutions might be exhausted. And when God opens the door and helps us in our great times of need, we have to immediately give glory to God. The Pharisees were so filled with unbelief towards God that they could not take a moment to give glory to for the great miracle this man had received in receiving his sight. They were so busy in trying to judge and to teach others according to the misconceptions of God that they had. They put limits on God. They put limits on what he's able to do. They completely failed to recognize the work of God's Son right in front of them. And by one miracle of the Lord, one man was given sight and a whole multitude lost even the sight that they had. The man went away from Christ with a fullness of sight, both physical and spiritual, while the Pharisees were left in complete blindness and darkness of heart. This is the way of the Lord. He gives to each one according to his character. The miracle is the same, but the perception of that miracle will depend completely on the heart of the one who encounters the work of God. St. Paul writes to Titus in Titus chapter 1, verse 15, To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and their conscience are defiled. So, to kind of put this together, do we see the impossible troubles in our lives and we try to rationalize them we try to blame we try to find the blame who is the source of the blame or do we find an opportunity for God to show us his strength and his love for us do we see the work of God that he does in our lives as a matter of luck as a matter of fortune or karma Or do we rightly give praise to the one who alone does wonders? His question to the blind man is the defining question for every human being today. Do you believe in the Son of God? This question is not only important for you, but it's important for our our society, our leaders. The way that we answer this question doesn't really say much about Christ. The way that we answer this question doesn't really change who he is. But our opinion will say a lot about us. 
What we believe about Christ tells God everything about us. It tells God whether we understand beauty and goodness and truth and light and love. If we look at Christ and we don't see these things, it's not because they aren't there. It's because we're still blind. Do you believe in the Son of God? It's a simple question. And it changes a man's life when he begins to wrestle with the possible answers. The change is nothing short of a miracle. It becomes his defining moment. The moment when a blind man sees his place in the world and his relationship to the Creator for the very first time. God did the impossible because he can create out of nothing. And if the Lord can create out of nothing, he most certainly can create out of something, even if that something seems like a terrible thing. This is the way of God's love. The God who does not blame us. The God who does not condemn us. We condemn ourselves. The God who goes out of his way to provide healing because he was merciful to the blind man and he is merciful to us. Difficulties and tragedies will happen because this world has fallen. And our Lord Jesus Christ heals and he restores because he has overcome everything that's difficult, even death itself. May our Lord, who granted sight, also grant us to see clearly. And I pray that our Lord continues to raise up our minds and our hearts to glorify and to praise his name. May we be granted healing of our own blindness and rejoice with this blind man and say, I once was blind, but now I can see. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah.